A blank canvas of this size would surely have tantalized even the great Michelangelo, so vast is it in ambition and scale. Behind this towering scaffolding is a 1,700 square foot wall on which the artist, Luca Bettini, will soon begin a Renaissance-style fresco. When finished, the story of Ranieras, patron saint of Pisa, will span eight sprawling scenes across the church of San Vito. And in the best Renaissance tradition, the artist has invited over a hundred prominent citizens of Pisa to represent the leading figures, together with 150 extras, all of whom will appear as period characters on the wall. It's an enormous responsibility, he tells me. The great Italian masters painted the history of Italy, the story of the Renaissance. I'm this small by comparison, but I hope I can paint something Pisa will cherish. And who knows, maybe one day they'll be talking about my work. It's not every day one gets the chance to be painted into posterity, so no shortage of volunteers. Roberto Balestri runs the local health food shop, but in Luca's fresco, he'll be painted as a knight, part of a crowd observing the saints' miracles. I don't know why I was chosen, he says. Perhaps it's my nose or my stature. I look slightly medieval. Certainly the costume is medieval. Every detail of this painting will be carefully constructed. Luca was forced to advertise repeatedly for someone to model the figure of the saint. Eventually, he settled on a well-known Pisan actor who'd appeared in a series of pasta advertisements. The paints he'll use are made in much the same way as they were in the Renaissance period. On this slate block, he combines his extraordinary collection of dyes, glues and resins to create these vibrant colours. At the moment, the 37-year-old is busy completing the preparatory drawings, but as this process unfolds, the characters will change as they're moulded into the eight sections that will fill the wall. There used to be a fresco depicting the story of Saint Ranieres, which stretched all the way down the wall of this ancient cemetery, the Campo Santo. Sadly, most of it was lost in a fire when this building was bombed during the Second World War. What you see behind me is a section of the fresco that has been restored, a small part of the last major fresco to have been painted in this city in some 700 years. Luca will use the same techniques. Once his figures have been copied to the wall, a thin layer of wet plaster will be applied through which the drawings will show. The paint must be applied while the plaster is still wet. It sucks in the colours as it dries. The celebrated British artist David Tyndall says once the plaster is on, Luca will have little more than an hour to paint each small section. This you put on your square of plaster, you take a big deep breath and you do it. And it doesn't matter whether your name is Michelangelo or a badly paid assistant, you do it. You know? Yeah, I mean I I just take my hat off to it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not just a big achievement like that. It's um, wonderful to want to do it, to have the passion to do it, and to dare to do it in the environment that we live in today. There is no room for mistakes in fresco painting, which is why so much time goes into preparing the wall. For the moment, the outline of each drawing is being diligently perforated so that red powder can be pushed through the holes to leave the outline. In all, it will take three years to complete, but when it is finally finished, the city, known for its leaning tower, will have something new to boast about. A Renaissance-style fresco to immortalise its modern-day citizens. Christian Fraser, BBC News, Pisa.